Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about zip code lookups. Now, this is where you can type in the zip code and the system will automatically populate the city, state, and country if it's in your database. And if not, it will prompt you for it. This helps keep your database nice and neat by giving you the proper spellings for the cities and states and so on. It'll allow users to enter new ones if they don't exist in the system already. But it also allows you to freely input the city and state if you want to. So let's take a look at the question for today. This actually started as a thread in our Microsoft Access Learning Zone discussion group on Facebook. And I know, Brent, you had one of our questions previously. I don't mean to keep picking on you, but this is actually a topic that I thought about covering earlier. Brent asks, is it better to build your tables so that you have a city table and a state table and a company table, probably meant country table. So you're getting as few keyed input as possible from the user. I just wanted to get your thoughts on this as I'm always trying to limit misspellings and duplicate information. Yeah, that can be a problem if you have people spelling things differently, like cities, for example. Um, you have people putting in you know, the same zip code, but they spell Los Angeles wrong or something along those lines. Robert added that there's zip first which has a zip code table. There's a lot of different sources out there that you can use to download zip code databases that you can actually pull into your database that has every zip code in the country. And you can just simply look that up and then pull in the city and state. Again, you run into a problem if you have foreign customers, but if you're just doing business in the US, that'll work. Anthony brings up what if someone deletes Massachusetts and that happens to be ID seven in your table. Now, of course, you've got sevens. I don't like linking states as an ID. I'll talk about this in a second. Stefan correctly notes, don't use auto numbers as a piece of data in the table. And then of course, there's my comments. I like having a zip code table with matching city and state names. However, I don't like saving those as IDs in the customer table because there are some instances where a particular zip code might encompass multiple towns with different names. And you want the user to be able to freely edit that once it's been typed in. So give, I like to give them an option to pick the city from a list, but don't necessarily force them to use it. Now, here's what I mean about a certain area having multiple towns inside of it. For example, here where I live in uh, Florida, I live in Fort Myers. So if I type in 33966, which is my zip code, you can see that that's just inside of Fort Myers. However, where I grew up was 14075. Now, 14075 is in Western New York, but it includes multiple townships. So if you have that zip code, you could be from Hamburg, you could be from North Boston, and those would show up on your address. You, you are a Hamburg resident, you're a North Boston resident, but you're in the 14075 zip code. So that's part of a problem, but we can address that by just simply giving a default option as Hamburg, and then someone can type in North Boston. Yes, you could do a table that you can pick from multiple cities and states, and I'll cover that in a different lesson, but for today, I'm gonna to show you the basic one where you can have a single default. Okay, so rather than reinventing the wheel and rebuilding a customer database with a customer table and form, go to my website real quick and grab my customer database template. It's free, it's got a basic customer table, customer form already set up, there's the web page. Here it is, customer database template. Scroll down a little bit, click on the download button. All right, save it to your desktop, wherever you wanna put it, open it up. If you get the security warning, go ahead and click enable content. You don't have to, there's no code. I don't think there's any code that runs in this database so far, but trust me, it's safe. All right, we got a basic customer table. Now this is how I'd like to have the customer table still set up, even with the new things we're going to do. We've got city, state, zip code, country, and they're all text fields. And this way, the user can still come in here and make changes. If, for example, uh, they put in 14075 and it's not Hamburg, they wanna put in North Boston, they can still make that change. Now, if you decide later on to add a lookup for multiple towns, you can lock these fields, all right? You can, you can set it so they can't freely type stuff in at the form level or even at the table level, but I would recommend leaving it as freely entered text. Is it perfectly normalized? No, but there are sometimes excuses why you wouldn't want to do that, and this is one of them. Just like when I talk about making customer orders, you don't necessarily want to have 
the customer's address tied to their order with a relationship because if they move you want to know where the order was originally shipped to not what their new address is so this is one of these situations where we're 100 percent completely normalizing the database doesn't make sense there's a lot of exceptions this is one of them all right so the customer form is pretty simple now what i want to do is i want to have it so that as i'm tabbing through here i'm going to come to zip code first all right, if the zip code field is blank and they enter something, look and see if city and state are blank. If so, pull up that information from a zip code table. If it's in there, if it's not in there, then prompt them for it and add it to it. So let's rearrange the customer table. Let's go to design view. And I'm going to do this. I'm gonna move everything down a little bit like this. And I'm gonna put the zip code up here. Make it a little bit bigger, make it a little more prominent. Let's copy one of these labels. I'm going to copy that and then paste it on top of zip code. It attaches it to that label. All right, and we'll put in here zip code, like so. If you wanna add a splash of color, you can, just to kind of remind the user that something happens. I like to do that. Let's open up this menu here. Let's put a splash of color behind it, maybe like a little bit of yellow just so, so that it reminds them that something's gonna happen. Okay, now, we need to build a lookup table next. So let's save this form, close it, and let's create table design. All right, our ID, doesn't matter what it is. We're going to need a zip code. All right, short text, city, state and country. I like putting country in there because it'll it'll be compatible with like Canada and stuff. Save this as my zip lookup T. Primary key defined, yes, okay. And you can call this zip lookup ID, whatever you want to call it. All right, we're not gonna really use it. Let's put some sample data in the lookup table. All right, I'm gonna put my current one in there. So 33966, city is Fort Myers. Florida. I'm gonna leave country blank for USA. That's my default. You can put multiple ones in here if you want to. All right, let's go back to our form now. Design view. Now, when this guy is updated, take a look and see if city is null. You could check city and state, but I'm just gonna look at city. If you're gonna have city in there, then that, then we'll trigger the, the update. If not then we won't. All right, so we're going to need an after update event for the zip code. Now, if you don't know what the after update event is, it's when you update or change a field, a text field or whatever, and some kind of programming event fires, okay? Yes, this example is gonna require a little bit of programming. I'm gonna show you what you need to know. I have another tutorial on YouTube the after update event that walks it walks you through the after update event in a little more detail if you've never seen this before. So go watch that right now if you need to, and then come back. So right click on the zip code, go to properties, way down here at the bottom, way down at the bottom, properties. Property event comes up, go to events, after update, click on dot, dot, dot. You might get another window up at this point asking you what kind of builder do you want? You wanna pick the code builder you're gonna build some VB code. I have the option set in my database, so that's the default. It's a pain to have to answer that every time you're doing something. So pick Code Builder. That'll bring you into the Visual Basic Editor. And again, you might have some stuff over here on the left. Ignore that. Now, at this point, you could check to see if there's already a city and state in there because you might wanna have it where they don't automatically overwrite the city and state. You could say something like, um, if not is null city, then exit sub. And that will exit out of here if there already is a city. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna get rid of that because I'm gonna have it so if they type in a new zip code, it overwrites what's there, All right? If the, if the customer changes, you wanna put in the new city and state. So let's just do a little test at this point and see and make sure we got the zip code. So I'm just gonna message box the zip code, just like that, message box zip. Save that, flip back over to access, just on the bottom down my toolbar down there. I'm gonna close the customer form and reopen it. And I'm gonna just change this, 33977, for example. Press tab or enter, and it pops it up. There we go. So we've got the zip code in our form that's already saved. All right, beautiful. All right, let's go back over to our VB editor.
Notice how you can just switch back and forth between, between them down here on the taskbar. Or you can hit the code button if you're in design view, but I like to leave the Visual Basic Editor open. Okay. So what we want to do next is look up and see if that zip code appears in our zip lookup table. If it does, automatically fill in the information from the city, state, and country fields. All right, so let's get rid of this stuff here. Let's put something new in here. We're going to look up that zip code in the zip lookup table and see if it exists. And if it does, then we will pull in the information from the city, state, and country fields. So let's use DLOOKUP to grab the ID from that table. So I'm going to say dim ID as a long, a long integer. And then I'm going to say ID equals DLOOKUP. What am I looking up? Well, I'm looking up the ID from the zip lookup table where the zip code equals, watch this, almost didn't put enough quotes in there. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of concepts here that you may or may not be familiar with. I've got tutorials for all this stuff on my channel already, but I'm not going to go over it here. There's DLOOKUP and then there's string concatenation. Let me give you some links real quick. I'll put these links down in the description below so you can just click on them. But DLOOKUP is what you use to look up a value from another table. String concatenation is putting together two strings, like first name and last name, into the same field. And I just finished another tech help video on string concatenation that talks about those double, double quotes, all that stuff around the zip code field. So what this is saying here in the nutshell is this ID field is going to be set equal to the ID from the zip lookup table where the zip on that table is the same as the zip in this table on the form. All right, this is the value from the form and it gets sent to the DLOOKUP function. So this should return the ID for whatever is in that table. So let's take a peek at it, make sure we got it. Message box, message box, the ID right here. I let the message box often to make sure I've got the right values. And yes, I've got tutorials on my website to cover all the dim stuff, the visual basics, beginnings, the message box, it's all on my website. I can't go over it in every lesson, but message box is what you use to put something on the screen. All right, back to access. Let's change this slightly. 33966, I know is in the database already. And there's the number one, that's the ID from the record in this table. All right, the zip lookup table, that ID gets returned. Now, what happens if it's not in there? What if I type in 3360? All right, I get invalid use of null. That's an error message, meaning it tried to return something that doesn't exist. So I'm gonna hit the end. Now you can get around that error by using an NZ function called null to zero. All right, NZ will basically say if this DLOOKUP returns a null value, if it doesn't exist, then you can specify what value to give it. So I'm gonna give it a zero. In other words, if that ID doesn't exist in the table, return a zero, okay? And that's good because no ID can be zero because auto numbers always start at one and go up. You can also use ID with text strings too and return like a blank string or any other value that you want. That's what the second value is, is for right here. That's NZ, null to zero. And again, yeah, I cover that in my classes. All right, so let's see what the message box returns now. All right, if I type in something that doesn't exist, like three, I get a zero. Okay, so now we just have to check and see if we have a zero or some other value. So right here, I'm gonna say if ID is greater than zero, then we're going to look up, uh, let's, say, let's say zip code exists, look up data, all right? Else, zip code does not exist, ask for it and if well the first part is relatively easy all right we can say right here the city equals d lookup we're going to look up the city field from zip lookup t where the id equals id like that um this is inside of a text string, so Access doesn't do that pretty little thing where it automatically capitalizes stuff for you, and I like to make my code look clean, so if I accidentally put an O in there, like that, I wanna fix that, all right? Even though it'll work because Access is not case sensitive, it still looks pretty like this. And here, we don't need the extra quotes in here because ID is a numeric value, all right? Now I can just copy and paste this, copy, paste, paste, for state, and, uh, country. 
All right, and then we're done. All right, that's the if it exists part. Let's go ahead and test it. All right, 33966, boom, Fort Myers, Florida, popped in there. All right, if this stuff was blank, and I come in here and I put in a five, all right, nothing happens. If I put in the six, boom, it fills those fields in. Okay, now I can still come in here and edit this stuff. These are freely editable. You can lock these if you want to. Just lock the lock the text boxes. All right, set the set the the locked property. But I like to leave these editable for the thing that I mentioned earlier. Now, what to do if we don't have that value in the table? Well, we're gonna have to ask for it and add it. So let's get three more memory variables. Dim. Now I can't use city, state, and country because those are already fields on the form, but we can use s city as string, s state as string, and s country as string. And we're gonna ask the user for these three values. We're going to say s city equals input box. What goes inside the input box? Here's a prompt, right? Enter city. The title can be city. You can put a default value in there if you want to. All right. There's X pose, Y pose, help file. There's all kinds of other stuff you can do, but that's really all you need right there. So city equals input box, enter city. Or if you want to make the title say um, zip code not found like that so that the, the prompt on top says zip code not found. All right. So we need to do the same thing for state and country. All right. State enter state and country all right let's just make sure this works so far let's come down here put something that doesn't exist ah i understand that my see this is why this pops up in the center of your screen which is off the the video window so it'll say enter city you put some stuff in hit okay enter state pops up next you can just hit okay or cancel and then enter country cancel okay so that's working so far. That's all we've got. We just popped up those input boxes. Yeah, and yeah, I cover input boxes in my classes too. All right, now we've got these values in memory variables. All right, stored up here in these string values. Now what we're going to do is add them to the form itself. All right, so let's just put them in the form, and then we'll add them to the table. So that's easy. The first part's easy. City equals s city. All right, state equals s state, and country equals s country. All right, let's test that and see if that works. Notice what I do here, by the way. I do a little bit and then I test it. Instead of writing a whole ton of code then you don't know where it's not working. Even I, who have been programming since I was, what, eight years old? So I don't want to say how old I am, but yeah, I was getting close to 40 years there, people, that I've been programming. <laughs> Pushing the big 5-0 here in a few years. Anyways, let's go back over here and make sure this works. All right, let's put something in here that's not in the table. All right, enter city. Yeah, my window, I'm gonna just slide up here so you can see it better. All right. All right, let's say city is somewhere, Florida, and the country will be blank. Boom, it puts somewhere Florida in there. So now getting the values and putting them in the form is the, is the easy part. Now putting them into the table, that can be a little trickier, uh, unless you know SQL. If you know SQL, then it's real simple. It's one line of code, which I'm gonna turn into two lines of code because I have to use a variable for it. So, a little bit of SQL here, people. Dim SQL as a string. All right, we're gonna put some SQL statement in here. Now, I'm going to use an SQL insert statement. All right, here's two more lessons for you to check out. If you don't know anything about SQL, structured query language, watch this one. And if you don't know what an append query is, where you add records to a table, then watch this one. And that pen query can take some data and put it inside of a table for you. Now, if you aren't an SQL genius and you don't always remember the syntax, if you don't use it every day, you don't remember it. I personally, I, I remember select statements, those are easy, but I don't remember all the other ones. So you can actually have access design this query for you and just copy the SQL. I do this all the time. So create query design I'm gonna shut the navigation pane for a minute. We don't need that or the property sheet. All right, what we're gonna do is we're going to make this an append query. What table are we appending onto? We're appending onto the zip lookup table. Hit okay. 
all right? What tables are we gonna pull data from? Well, we're not pulling from any table, so don't worry about that stuff here. So down here, we're gonna actually put values into the, uh, into the table from our VBA code, the stuff that we just asked for. We're not pulling data from a table. All right, so what fields are we gonna be appending into? Come down here to the append to field. We're gonna append the stuff that we just got. All right, we're gonna append to city. What is the data? Well, the data is gonna be whatever I collected from my VBA code. So just put in here a CCCCC for cities. Now look, access turns that into expression one CCCCC. Do the same thing for state, all right, a bunch of S's, and then country. All right, we'll put in here just some, uh, some Y's. All right, now, we also have to put the zip code in too. All right, the zip code there, put in a bunch of Z's because we just collected that as well. Now, we're not gonna run this guy. We're gonna take a look at its SQL. So right click here or go up to the view button and pick SQL view. This is the code that we need to put into our VBA, so copy this stuff, the insert into command. All right, it's called an append query, an SQL is an insert. All right, copy. Come back over to VBA, I left it open in the background down here. All right, and right here, I'm going to say my SQL string equals, open up quotes and then paste that stuff in. Now it's in two lines here, but that's okay. Follow with me. All right, insert into zip lookup T. These are the fields we're inserting into, all right? Put a space in there, and then we'll continue this line with the line continuation character. All right, come down here, tab, 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 tab that in. All right, select. Now, here's the values that are going to be going in there. Okay, now this assumes it's fields from a table. I'm going to replace this with my actual data. All right, now here's that string concatenation comes in handy. This whole thing here is getting replaced with city. So close the quotes and city. Or you can use your S city if you want to. That's probably cleaner. Both will work because we've already assigned them to the table. All right. So select city. Now this city is actual text, so you got to put quotes around it. See that? It gets a little tricky, but it works. Now do the same thing with the other fields. I'm going to copy all this stuff here. Copy. And then let's just get rid of that. We got state country and then the zip code at the end and then we can get rid of that all right i should have my quotes all lined up properly let's just go state there country there and then the zip code is in uh the zip code is in zip That's the field we initially used from the form. We don't need to insert the ID anywhere because this record doesn't exist in that table yet. Now let's take a peek at my SQL statement just to make sure it's correct. So message box, the SQL, and we'll see what we got. We'll see what this turned into. All right, we can close that query. We don't need to save it. And let's put something in here, zero, boom. All right, enter city, we'll just put uh, uh, Buffalo. New York, 14222. Okay, there's my SQL statement that we generated. So insert into zip lookup T, these fields, city, state, country, zip, those are the fields in the zip lookup T, these values, Buffalo, New York, 14222, and the zip code. Hit okay, now we have to actually run that SQL, which is real easy now. It's do command dot run SQL, my SQL statement. And then you can put a message up here that says, you know, uh, zip code added or whatever you want to do. Right, well, I'll find message box, zip code added to table, to lookup table, if you want the user to see that. All right, we should have a working solution now. Let's go test it. Here we are, zip code. 14075. Enter. All right, zip code not found. Hamburg, New York. Country is blank. Enter. All right, zip code added to lookup table. Let's go see. Zip lookup T. Oh, there it is. It's beautiful. 
Let's do another one. Let's do 33993. Enter city, zip code not found. That's Cape Coral, Florida. Country is USA, boom. Zip code added to lookup table. Let's double check. Oh, there it is. Pretty cool. Let's do one from a different country. Let's do um, M4B. Now, see, here's the thing. Like, like with Canada, they put a space in the middle. So you have to decide now if you want to limit it to just those six characters or if you want to have that space in the center. I'm really, not, I don't know. I, I, I don't know a lot about Canadian zip codes. I actually just looked this up on Google. I'm going to make it so there's no spaces in there. So 1B3. And you can, actually, you can actually filter out the spaces if you want to to keep your zip code lookup tables clean. All right, but let's let's put that in there. All right, that's Toronto. Um, state would be Ontario, the province, and then Canada. All right, zip code add lookup table. Boom. Let's double check it. Looks good. All right, what if we go back to three three nine six six, Fort Myers, Florida. If you don't want spaces in your zip codes, then when it's looked up, the first thing you can do right up here is you can say zip equals replace, zip comma space comma blank, like that. That'll say take every space character in the zip code field and replace it with a blank. So it just gets rid of all the spaces. So now if you do get someone that types it in with the space, it should still correctly find it. So M for Actually, before I do that, I want to I want to capitalize everything too. Let's let's real quick while we're while we're at it, right? We'll say zip equals UK zip, like that. It'll capitalize it first before doing any lookups or adding it to the table. That way, your table's nice and clean. All right, one more try. All right, what was that zip code again? What did I use? Um, do, 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 do. M four B, and then they put a space in there. One B three. See how it corrected it, and then it looked up Toronto, Canada. See, and you could theoretically do uh, one four zero space seven five, and it'll fix it. Okay, see that's we're making it smart. Okay, that's all for today's class for the tech help question, and you have enough information to go forth and do what we were trying to do. We've accomplished our goal. However, I did make an extended version of this video available. It's on my website. What the extended version does is it takes into account a situation where a zip code may have more than one city and state associated with it. Now, I grew up in such a place, as you can see on the screen there, zip code 14075 encompasses multiple cities, multiple towns. I grew up in Hamburg. There's also North Boston and a couple other ones. So if someone types in 14075, the current system that we have now, which works, will just always bring back Hamburg. And if it's something different, you'll have to type it in. What if you want the user to be able to pick that option or add a new one? Well, that's where this comes in. In the extended version, if we type in a zip code, let's say 88888, just for whatever. All right, if it doesn't exist, you can see that we're prompted immediately to put in something. Let's call this uh, my town, Florida. All right, and then we'll hit set. That sets the value in here. Now, if on another record, let's just go here and say this guy is 88888, it automatically puts in my town. But if that's not right, you can hit edit and add something else. My town, your town, Florida, and then set that one. Now, if the next person comes in and is at 88888, you're prompted for which one is it? Oh, are you in my town or in your town? So it handles all three situations. If it doesn't exist, you're prompted for it. If it does exist and there's only one, it'll just fill it in for you, which is the vast majority of them. Or you can go back and edit it if you want to put a different city and state in there. And of course, you can just come in here and just type in manually. I like giving the user the ability to type in manually without adding it to the database as well. So if you want the extended version of this database, you can find it on my website. There's the link right there. I'll also put it in the description field below the video, as well as links to all of the other stuff that we talked about in this lesson, including the DLOOKUP function, string concatenation, after update events, SQL basics, app pen queries, all kinds of stuff covered in this lesson. Thanks, and I hope you learned something today.
stop by, check out my template section. Got lots of other templates available on my website. If you like what you saw today, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell. Click on the little bell and you get notifications. I'm going to start doing live streaming soon, too, where I can answer your questions live on the air. So if you subscribe, you'll get a notification when I go live. Want your questions answered? Well, visit my Tech Help page and you'll see how you can submit your questions. I've also got a pretty active group on Facebook and you can submit your questions there. This is where this question actually came from. I've actually got some forums on my website available as well. You can find them at the forums link there. I recently put some time into fixing my forums so they work again. Drop me an email if you want. There's the other links to my goodies. Facebook, my blog, Twitter, YouTube, all that stuff. Shameless advertising, of course. With every lesson, you got to watch a little advertising, right? Level one, three hours long. There's the link. Did I mention it was three hours long? And if you like that, level two, which is another hour and something, one dollar. All right. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. I'll go forth and get to work on access.